Monday morning I am outside the gym and we are about to get this lift in um yo let's all be decent people this week let's all just be good decent humans this week I don't feel like that's asking too much I was reading this post from one of my homies this morning and uh he's in the insurance game but then he also just to kind of supplement uh, his income, he's also delivering through uh, Uber Eats. And he's he's got a daughter who has been going through some crazy, crazy, crazy health uh, situations over the past couple years, really just been battling cancer and stuff like that. And so uh, my dog is uh, delivering on the side just to be able to supplement his income, have more money. I'm, sh I'm assuming medical bills and all that is probably just crazy, right? Um, but he made a post talking about how exhausted he is and the exhaustion doesn't come from like everything that he's going through, uh, with the family, or I don't want to say doesn't come from it probably, uh, probably plays a role. But in this post, um, he was talking about, you know, it's not the family. It's not the fact that he's working two jobs. Essentially, it's just the simple fact that when he's out delivering food, how poorly he's treated and so um yo it, it's just like i just want to share hold myself to this you know hold myself to the same standard but yo anybody who's watching this video let's just be decent humans this, this week um or if you can for the rest of your life right but like don't ever treat anybody less than don't don't ever treat anybody like you know based on what their job is or based on however you're judging them in that moment that you know um you have the right to be to hold yourself up here and they're just down here and you treat them as such let's not do that let's be decent humans this week um i know you're surprised that i'm already back with another vlog after a vlog just dropped we on to something <laughs> let's go get this workout I was going back through some of my old vlogs um, which I'm thankful I did because that's kind of what inspired me to like pick up the camera and really get this going again but um, man I was my intent was right you know what I'm saying I was still very very young in the game very new in the game and I just wanted to I was so excited and so on fire for everything that I learned because back then I was staying up all night 
<laughs> just watching YouTube videos and just talking to anybody that I could or like people around Kansas City that were already mixing and, and engineering in general and just picking their brains and um, remixing the same song 10 times and sending it out to people to get their feedback. Like I was so on fire so that, you know, everything that I learned, I just wanted to pick up the camera and just share with you guys. But being where I'm at now and knowing what I know now and going back and watching a lot of those old videos, I realized I was doing way too much, way too much. My brain approaching the mixing, approaching the mixes, my brain was so technical and so focused on the new technique that I learned and how many, like, where could I use it? And like, um, it, I don't know, it was just, I even got to the point where I got tired of listening to music because I couldn't think, I couldn't just be a fan. I only listened to the technical aspects of every single song. Some of my favorite songs from like all time, I was just like breaking it down from like a mix perspective, which could be cool, but it could also be overwhelming if you're just at a point to where it's just like, you're constantly critiquing yourself compared to the greats, right? And not understanding how they got there. So yeah, I just realized I gotta stop doing so much. Um, I'm gonna make videos talking about the different specific topics on like just different things where I've grown a lot and think, like different perspectives I have on maybe things that I, I talked about in the past or just new things um, of how I approach mixing in general. Now I'm gonna create specific videos on that, but just overall, if you find yourself approaching a mix from a technical aspect and just trying to figure out how you can tweak every single sound and how you can um, perform, per perform surgery on like every single element of the mix, you're probably doing yourself a disservice versus if you're approaching the mix with the mindset of, let me get as much energy and as much emotion or the right energy, the right emotion based on the song. You'll go a lot further with that type of mindset versus approaching it from a, um, you know, let me solo every single track in this record and make it as clean as possible and as pristine as possible and as clear and cut out all the mud of everything. And like, I don't know, that was just my mindset back in the day. I don't know how many of you guys are at that point. Um, or still think that way. But if it's from any advice that I gave you, my bad, <laughs> my bad. It's crazy, the, the, it's really crazy just watching Mix with the Masters, because that's probably what I watch the most. And, you know, watching a lot of the dudes that you really admire, look up to, or really um, get inspired anytime you hear their work. The crazy thing is, is half the time, their mixes are super, super minimal when it comes to the amount of plugins that they're using um, to be able to get the sound that they're getting, right? Like you hear these mixes with this massive low end and just like, you know, separation and the clarity that you're looking for, but the power that you're looking for uh, for me, I've always struggled with low mids, like the low mids are just like, right. And you watch these mixes thinking that you're going to watch some sort of like magic sauce and you see like the basics, <laughs> the basics. And they just take their time with the basics and gain staging and all the boring fundamental stuff that we all know and take for granted, you're surprised to see that it's very minimal. The approach is very minimal. Um, and it's just like, bro, you've got to stop doing so much. One thing that's wild is watching myself or watching younger YouTube, younger engineers or newer engineers or um, less experienced engineers. You know, me, I was using a million plugins on everything all the time, but I was scared to push the plugins. I would be scared to push an EQ. I would be scared to push a compressor. 
right? And just because like we learn all this stuff on YouTube and on the internet, you gotta EQ before you compress or you gotta compress before you EQ or um, you know, you only want to cut, you never want to boost, you know, all the stuff that we hear, right? Like never boost more than 2 dB or 3 dB or never compress more than, you know, X amount of dB. And then you watch the, the pros, the dudes that are out here snatching up all these Grammys and they might have a compressor pinned to where it's not even moving, right? Or they've got a high shelf on a vocal at 8K boosted like, eight, nine, 10 dB, don't even care, right? They don't even think about it. It's just like pushing until it sounds good, right? Compressing until it sounds good, okay? And so like use the tools that you have and just make it sound good and stop thinking about all these like YouTube rules and all these internet rules. Mix with emotion, mix with energy, mix with that part of your brain instead of trying to stick to the YouTube rules. And my bad for playing a part in that, all right? But we're gonna pivot, we are going to move forward and we're all gonna continue to grow. And I'm probably still not gonna give you 100% perfect advice because I'm still out here learning, but that's what this is all about. Let's get it y'all, peace.